मैं दोस्तों आज के सैटरडे स्पेशल एडिशन के अंदर इस वक्त मैं जो सबसे ज्यादा कंट्रोवर्शियल मुद्दा जिसको लटेंस की लॉबी को जिससे सबसे ज्यादा जड़ी चीड़ है वो है हिंदुत्व का और मेरे साथ में इस वक्त अगर मैं बात करना चाहूं तो मेरे साथ प्रसिद्ध ऑथर अरविंदन नीलाकंदन जुड़ चुके हैं एंड यू आई नो यू ओनली अंडरस्टैंड इंग्लिश एंड स्पीक इन इंग्लिश so i have done this in the past because i believe language should not be a barrier to take the thought forward so i i will ask you a question in english and hindi and you can you can speak in the language you are convenient on dosto inhone ek badi prasiddh kitab likhi hai hindutva origin and future to agar aap jaye to zarur is kitab ko padhiyega to arvindan ji main aapke paas sabse pehle aana chahta hu ki hindutva shabd ke khilaf left aur latins ki lobby sabse zyada hai वो कहती है कि हिंदुत्व कम्युनल है पर जब मैं आपकी किताब को पढ़ता हूं और आपकी किताब को पेज नंबर 27 पे पढ़ता हूं तो आप ये कहते हैं कि महात्मा गांधी से लेकर श्री और से लेकर भीमराव अंबेडकर जी ने तीनों ने जो हिंदुत्व या हिंदूनेस की डेफिनेशन है उसको अलग अलग फॉर्म में उसकी यूनिकनेस को स्वीकार है वॉट आई एम आस्किंग यू इज दैट द लेफ्ट एंड द लेटिन लॉबी इज complete feels that hindutva is a communal word but in your book you have quoted that from shri orbindo to mahatma gandhi to veer savarkar to in fact to uh, ambedkar all have believed in the uniqueness and the essence of hindutva and hinduism and hinduness and this all this myth that it is communal in nature is a left propaganda arvindan yeah of course uh, if you look at our national movement and if you if you look at the way the modern indian state has been founded usually we ascribe uh, three persons to the modern indian state uh, mahatma gandhi jawaharlal nehru and dr ambedkar now if you take all these three people you will find that all these three founders of the modern indian state india is an ancient nation and it is a modern indian state and if you see the founders of the modern indian state they all have agreed that india is an ancient nation that the cultural unity of india is unquestionable even pandit jawaharlal nehru accepted this fact and what is this fundamental unity of india it is a process and that process from rabindranath tagore to veer savarkar they identified it as hindutva so hindutva is a process a national process it is not a political ideology hence it cannot be By definition, it cannot be coming. So, मैं अपने ऑडियंस को समझाना चाहता हूँ वो कह रहे हैं कि और बिंदु से लेके महात्मा गांधी से लेकर अगर भीमराव अम्बेडकर की बात करी जाए सबने ये इनफैक्ट जवाहरलाल नेहरू ने भी एट पॉइंट्स कहा है कि ये यूनिकनेस और आ, की कल्चर की बात की और हिंदुज्म जो और हिंदुत्व जो है वो हमारे कल्चर की यूनिफाइंग एस्पेक्ट की बात होती है इनफैक्ट आई वॉज रीडिंग योर पार्ट इन अनादर इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट इन योर बुक जिसमें आपने ये कहा है पहले मैं अपने ऑडियंस को बताया इन्होंने ये कहा है कि जब इनने हिंदू शब्द की डेफिनेशन की बात की है हिंदूनेस की बात की है तो आप ये कहते हैं कि वीर सावरकर डिफाइंड इट एज जो भी व्यक्ति जो इस भारतवर्ष या भारत माता को मानता है और फ्रॉम द लैंड ऑफ इंडस से लेकर नीचे के बीच में रहता है उसको आपने कहा है हिंदू दिस इज वॉट हैज बीन डिस्क्राइब बाई वीर सावरकर इन इज राइटिंग एंड ऑल्सो दिस इज बीन डिस्क्राइब बाय द ज्ञान बाय ज्ञान शक्ति पब्लिश इन गोरखपुर इन 1916 बाय द एडिटर शिव कुमार शास्त्री तो मेरा सवाल यह है आपसे कि जब इतना सब कुछ क्लियर है तो क्या इंडिपेंडेंस के बाद में मार्क्सिस्ट और लेफ्टिस्ट ने जानबूझकर हिंदुत्व और हिंदुनेस को एक कम्युनल एंगल से देखने की कोशिश करी थी डिड द लेफ्टिस्ट इन द मार्क्सिस्ट इन द पोस्ट इंडिपेंडेंट एरा दैट इज द नेहरूवियन एरा consciously purposely try to give communal color to the word hindutva and which is completely bereft of facts yeah uh, now if you look at the post independence scenario um, actually you have to see some kind of a connection with the colonial period during the colonial period the british wanted indians not to have a national conscience so they they promoted this idea that india is just an administrative convenience created by the british and that we are linguistically separate we are religiously separate etc etc right and they had a vested interest for that in the case of uh, uh, post independent uh, post colonial scenario in india there were dynastic forces 
that wanted to have the same kind of, uh, they had the same kind of agenda as our colonial administrators. So what they did was essentially they wanted Indians to feel that if there is no dynasty, India would uh, shatter into pieces. If there is no socialism, India would shatter into pieces. So the dynasty promoted the idea, the dynasty politics, the dynasty uh, promoted establishment scholarship. They all uh, promoted this idea that India is actually nothing but a, a combination of different linguistic uh, uh, nation, sub-nation goods coming together. And that is what, for example, right now Rahul Gandhi is saying. Riding on this dynastic vested interest, riding on this dynastic vested interest, the communists, they promoted their own agenda, telling that India is only a collection of uh, linguistic nations. Very in important. All... And allow me to try, allow me to communicate to it, it to my audience in Hindi, because I believe your work, which is a fabulous piece of academic work, which should be read by every Indian, should go in as many languages as possible. Arvindan is saying that after independence, ke baad mein leftist or Marxist ne jaan kar is thought ko aake leke gaya tha ki India ki jo Bharatiya identity, Hindu identity hai, wo subservient hai, aur alag alag regional, alag alag jo regional identities hai, wo sarvopari hai, jo Britishers chaate the. To jaise ki mein aapko kahi baar se kehta hoon ki British ke proxies jo hai is desh ke andar 1947 ke baad bhi British ke agenda chalane ki koshish kar rahe the through their academic work. Arvind Arvindan, Arvindan, what prompted you to write this book? Aapko aisa kya aapko andar ya aaya ki aapne itni bade thought process ki such a, you know, such a big and a very in-depth research academic book aapne likhi. What prompted you? Or Arvindan, why I ask is, kyunki kuch samay pehle ek, पूरी ग्लोबल लॉबी थी जो कह रही थी कि हिंदू हिंदुइज्म एंड हिंदुत्व कंप्लीटली अलग है डिसमेंटलिंग ग्लोबल हिंदुत्व की बात की गई थी ग्लोबी देयर वाज अ टॉक ऑफ डिसमेंटलिंग ग्लोबल हिंदुत्व देयर वाज अ टॉक ऑफ हिंदुइज्म इज कंप्लीटली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम हिंदुत्व सो व्हाट प्रॉम्प्टेड यू टू राइट दिस वर दीस लॉबीज व्हिच वर ट्राइंग टू यू नो स्प्रेड अ फॉल्स प्रोपेगेंडा अगेंस्ट अस सिविलाइजेशन व्हिच प्रॉम्प्टेड यू ओए ओके पंडर जी द रीजन आई रोट दिस बुक इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ माय ओन एक्सपीरियंस I have gone to RSS Shagas. When I was uh, 14, I have gone to the, my first Shaga. And I have seen that in RSS Shagas or in RSS camps, there has never been any hate propaganda. But when I read the literature outside about RSS, I always find that the literature says RSS was actually indoctrinating the young minds in, with the hate propaganda. For example, it is from the RSS Shagas I learned about Ashwagullah Khan. It is from the RSS Egatmata Stotra I learned about uh, Raskan, Ibrahim Raskan. So the point is, my experience of RSS is that this was uh, teaching me without hatred the complete heritage of India. When I go out and I read the academic work, the academic work and the media and the polity, a section of polity, they were telling that RSS is this mean uh, hate peddling organization. Then later I found that the same thing is true for Hindutva also. So I wanted to understand what was actually happening. I went through the literature and I found that RS, what RSS and Hindutva, the way they have been projected, the academics were leaving out a large amount of data intentionally. They were leaving out a large amount of data and they were projecting only a such data in a distorted way. I okay. wanted to set the record right and hence I wrote this book. My last question to you, Arvindan, because I would do a very in-detail interview and I would appeal that your book should go to every youngster in this country who should definitely read about this. But my last question to you is that has there been a civilizational renaissance that you see under Prime Minister Narendra Modi in India? Kya hamari Bharatiya Sanskriti ka ek renaissance ka aap ek moment dekhte hain Pradhan Manti Narendra Modi ke under abhi Hindustan ke under, in, uh, India ke under. Uh, uh, Actually, Arvindan. for the first time, in the history of uh, Hindu civilization, we are having a pan-India Hindu civilizational renaissance under Sri Narendra Modi. This is a very important first step, but we do not have the luxury to rest. The point I want to stress is this. Each and every vote that you give in every election has a civilizational consequence. Now we are seeing the civilizational consequence of our votes. And that is a civilizational renaissance. 
if we are for some reason not following up following yes. this up very rigorously then we will be doing a great disservice so yes i am seeing a civilization of renaissance absolutely under narendra modi thank you so much arvindan and i would appeal to everyone that you should go through this book you agree with him or disagree with him but it's important because abhi swak sabse zyada jis sab ki baat ho rahi hai wo hai hindutva aur hinduism mere sath dosto ye 8 baje ke sabse zyada dekhe jane wale show mein mere sath judne ke liye bahut bahut dhanyawad hamesha se main aapke sath mein sachchai ki baat karta rahunga namaskar india news ladega janta ke sath mukadma